Hello, my name's Artemis, and it seems that one massive thing that ties us all together into being British in this failing little shithole of a country of ours is our wonderful accentage. Sure, the Yanks seem to love our accent, but there's a whole lot more than just the one in Whitland, and Jesus, some of them are a little bit fucking awful. So our accents are pretty region specific and uh, there's a lot of wide differences between them all. Um, there's also massive variations in just the way we fucking speak. For instance, there's phrases and whole mannerisms that come with the language that are exclusive to specific languages because, you know, why would we have one single unified way of speaking? That sounds too fucking easy. Now, we've got to make this shit as overcomplicated as possible just for the shits and giggles. So first up, we got the uh, accents of the capital, that is London. Uh, some of these London lad accents are a little bit stereotypical, and it's the kind of thing you will hear in the capital, but you're probably going to think you're going to get mugged when you do. There are certain idioms and phrases that the youth seem to collectively use, and that's known as roadman speech, which might sound a little fucking weird coming out of my mouth. Just have to bear with me a second as I try and do an example of this speech. Oh, okay. What my name? You see them fuckers arcing up the prices of nuggets, bruv. They expecting beer bread for that wasser, you hear me fam? Oh my god, I can't believe I actually let myself do that. But yes, this is the kind of thing that a lot of people in the capital and a lot of kids all over the country are going to try and emulate because it, uh, it matches a lot of the music that they like, a lot of the culture that they feel like they should be, you know, exploiting and experiencing in their youth. It's the kind of thing that if you're chatting on the street, people are going to think you're an art man. I mean, it, it doesn't really apply that way, especially when you're 12. Another very well-known accent in London is that of the Cockney accent. Cockney applies to anybody born within earshot of Bow Bells, which is the uh, the bells of the church, St. Mary Le Bow. So basically, it's not an area, it's like a group of areas. It's not as if you can get a taxi and say, oh, gov, take me to Cockney. He'd probably just fucking stare at you like the touristly bastard you are. There's a very famous Cockneys in our day. You've got Chaz and Dave, Michael Caine, you've got the, uh, the Cray twins, those people. So, you know, there's quite a lot of them. National treasure, Danny Dyer. He's a cockney. Best examples of the accents like this is Lock, Stock, Two, Smoking Barrels, and Snatch. That's pretty much the entire language of the film. Any quote from that will do. You can take any from Bricktop. You bet your bonnets to a barn dance, you're going to have a fight. I don't care if he's Mohammed, Ahmad, Bruce Lee. <laughs> The really interesting thing about the Cockney accent is that it's actually got its own pseudo-language in Cockney rhyming slang. I'm pretty certain that the main reason this whole thing came about was to fuck with anybody coming to this country and trying to pick up the language, because this is a U-turn on everything that makes sense. It's kind of hard to explain, but basically the word that they actually mean rhymes with what they're saying, so, um, bread and honey, that means money. Uh, that, that kind of shit. The really difficult part is that they actually abbreviate that, so that money then becomes bread. So. That doesn't actually fucking rhyme, does it? Not even a little bit, but bread is a shortened version of bread and honey. Bread and honey equals money. It, it's a fucking nightmare, oh my god. Now, West Country is the stereotypical farmer's accent. It stretches across Dorset, Wessex, Somerset, Cornwall, all of that shit. And it's the country bumpkin kind of way of speaking, although it does kind of cross the line into a pirate accent seeing as, you know, that's potentially where a lot of the pirates actually sailed from. Best kind of example I can give would come in the form of hot fuzz quotes. If you want to know mums is packing around here. Yeah, lot of food. Farmers. And? Farmers mums. You want to be a big cop in a small town? Fuck off up the model village! I don't know, I've had my top off in this lay-by before. The greater good. There's not a lot to be said about this accent, apart from the fact that the people who really live deep in the country, the true farmers elite, they speak it so thickly sometimes that it really does feel like an entire second fucking language. Thankfully, I've lived in Dorset for quite a while now, so I can kind of pick up on it, although down here you don't exactly get the farmer's language, it's more just, I mean, in this town, smackhead and scum. Ah yes, the plummy accent. Stereotypical of moaning northerners who never seem to be happy with anything. Of course, a staunch southerner like myself might say that, but... Oh, well, the places I've seen the fleshy bastard work, it seems like that often runs true. But then again, people are generally moaning bastards, so I suppose we can't attribute it all to just one accent. Broken around places like Birmingham and Kidderminster. Oh, God, I can't do it. Oh, God, it's like fucking sandpaper on the fucking eardrum. Jesus. Okay, it, do it does get a bit rough when you try and speak it. But then again, there are some examples where the Brummie accent 
can actually be pretty badass. And if you've seen Peaky Blinders, or to give it his bloody name, Peaky Blinders, then you'll actually know what I mean by that. Of course, there's one or two people in this fandom that have this accent and don't exactly give it the uh, shining reputation it might deserve. I'm not even a fucking brummer. Well, I mean, you're close enough. Fuck off, Dada. Oh, God, you're just all shades of wrong. Yeah, right. You know you love it, you soppy bastard. We all see you flashing your paws all over the internet and trying to be all cute oh, oh, and God. shit. Okay, no, just fucking stop, okay? I am cute. Everybody knows that by now. Damn right you are. Oh, okay, no, that's enough. Fucking hell, just cut to the next shit. This is another northern accent that can be pretty fucking difficult to pick up on. It is the Geordie accent. Typically found around the Tyneside area of northeast England and Newcastle. Good luck fucking understanding it. It's a whole different beast, this one. Gonna have to rely pretty heavily on Alan Partridge to give examples, seeing as he had a character called Michael the Geordie, so it obviously works pretty fucking well. God, I'm gonna have to try and attempt some examples myself, though. Ah, uh, these pets, you like a wee fishy or a dishy? Oh, that was bad. Oh my god. I'll be honest, I struggle with this one because it, it is just heavy, you know? You got a lot of weird inflections with this accent, like D becomes D, you know? That, that sort of shit. Right becomes wheat. So, ah, uh, these pet is like, all right, mate. You know, it's it's fucking... It's a, it's a whole different world up there. Us salmoners just, just don't fucking get that, you know? Let's, let's move on, Jesus. <laughs> Ah yes, the Scousers. Now this is the kind of accent you pick up usually around Liverpool and that whole area of Tottenham. The thing about this accent and the thing about a lot of accents up north is that the word the just completely fucks off when it gets anywhere up close to the Midlands and just becomes T. So if we might say down south, that is the Scouse accent. Up north, they might say that's to Scouse accent. So there's two major examples you know the Scouse accent from. One, of course, is the world famous Beatles. So you got people like, no, oh, my name's John Lennon, and I will fucking imagine it's one of the best songs in the fucking world, and I love sucking Yoko Ono's dick. We are the Beatles. We sold fucking loads of records. We're way better than all of you lot. Bastards. But it's also the fucking language of just like gossiping hairdressers from the 70s just sort of sitting there with the curlers in like, do you know what fucking Sandra was saying to me the other day, right? She went home, she found Bill asleep with a fucking man. His knob all the way down his fucking throat. Sandra was like, Bill, I know you were good at taking a load of shit, but I didn't think you'd suck a dick like that, sunshine. I thought in my little life I would have taught you a bit better than that. I'm sure a lot of you can already picture exactly the kind of person that's gonna have this. It's gonna fag in their mouth at all fucking times. Oh my god. Okay, maybe we're just going along stereotypical lines, but Christ almighty, that kind of fits, doesn't it? At eight, then you got the Scottish accent. It's quite easy to do this one, you know. There's lots of examples. You got still game, you got fat bastards. I'm gonna stop there. I can't do Scottish the entire way through. But yes, this accent is not exactly region specific, but like country specific. And there are differences in it. You've got like Glaswegian, you've got like Edinburgh Scottish, but fuck knows if I can tell the difference between the two. You wanna think things like Braveheart, you wanna think things like um, Still Game's a good one, that's typically Scottish. Still Game is really great because it actually demonstrates something called the Glasgow patter. Now this is kind of like the Scottish version of the Cockney rhyming slang that I mentioned, whereas it has different words and different ways of using words. One well, of the biggest examples of this would be how or how no. So a typical sentence uh, in this country would be, can you stop doing that? Why? Just, just stop. In Scottish that could be, gunny nae do that? How? Just gunny nae. I probably butchered the fuck out of that, but you've got uh, canny, which is like, can you or cannot? And then you've got how. Now, as my understanding goes, they say how as in why because it's like, how so? So where we might say, oh, you're acting like a bit of a dick. Why am I a dick? You could say, well, how so? How so am I acting like a dick? It's a Scottish kind of one with that, like, oh, God, I think I've over explained the shit out of that. Jesus. There's, there's loads of examples. Obviously, I'm just going to just quote the fuck out of Still Game if I try and go through them all. And I, I, I don't want to just rip off someone else's content entirely. I mean, that's kind of against everything I stand for, so... Ah, 
And coming up next, we've got the Irish accent. Less of a regional thing, more of an actual country thing. So uh, the Irish accent can be split into a lot of things. There's lots of little variations. But one thing I've noticed is that it's really difficult to find, like, accents within accents. Like, you know, sometimes people will mention having Edinburgh Scottish and, like, Glasgow Scottish. And to me, that's just Scottish. So... I'm certain that I'm probably doing a specific Irish accent in these examples, but fuck knows if I can tell you what it is. So to think about doing the Irish accent is you don't have to make it too stereotypical. You can talk a bit normally with it, you can give it a little bit of an Irish flair, some of it's not that hard to get across. And of course it lends itself to stereotypical things as well. You can talk about leprechauns and bombing people like you're in the IRA, it's that sort of shit. Of course, I would never obviously do that, as, as, as Alan Partridge once said, and yes I know I'm using him a lot, there's more to Ireland than this. If you want true examples of how the Irish accent really does work, then you want to look at things like Father Ted. As much as that was a parody of Ireland at the time and Catholicism, it does actually give itself quite a good view of the general Irish accent spoken quite broadly. There is, of course, another version of the Irish accent, which is also more kind of like a language, and that's Pikey Irish. And for this, you're going to want to go and have a look at Brad Pitt and Snatch. Think about Pikeys is that nobody knows what the fuck they're talking about. Here, in fact, you like, you like Dax. It's, it's difficult. It's, it's a thing. Um, typically spoken by travellers, the word Pikey has its own sort of insult meaning to it, so don't apply that to anybody. Um, it's, it's kind of like tea leaf. Oh, there's another cockney thing. Tea leaf means feet. Again, you want the best example of that? Brad Pitt, Snatch, like, that's the fucking epitome of Pikey Irish. That, that works. Ah, uh, yes, look, the next accent is the Welsh one. The Welsh accent can be nice and bouncy. You sound very friendly with the Welsh one. And then, of course, you've got to get over to Wales, because it's not really much of a region. It's more of a country. It's about as good as you're going to get out of me. Like, well, Welsh is sometimes easy, sometimes not. Again, Wales is the country. It's part of the United Kingdom, so you've got to go across the River Severn to really get there. Uh, apparently, Wales does have, like, a bit of a distinction. You've got, like, Southern Wales, and you've got, like, the mountain range version of Wales. And, you know, the really confusing part of this is that it has its own language. And now, yes, there are things like Gaelic, so, you know, every accent kind of has its own language, but Welsh is still spoken. You go to Wales, and all the signs are in English and Welsh. And, and it just kind of looks like someone's taken the English language, stuck it in a blender, and then just poured out whatever's left. And from my experience, this is the absolute best accent for directing sheep, seeing as that's pretty much their livelihood, and, you know, directing sheep is uh, in my blood. You get some wonderful singers, you got people like Tom Jones, he was Welsh. There's a lot of people who are Welsh that you wouldn't really fully fucking expect to be Welsh, because the accent can get dropped quite a lot, and it doesn't really follow across in the singing voice, neither. Some of the weird things you get with Welsh is that uh, they kind of drop certain sounds and certain inflections on words. You know, their sentences sometimes sound like they're going to ask a question, because it always goes up at the end with some people, but one of the ones that really I had to get my head around was here becomes year. So, you like bunch, you want to come year, or should I come there? Yeah. Yeah. What's that about? That doesn't make any fucking sense. Oh, we need, we need to find, like, the actual proper way of speaking, the way everybody should be. Oh, maybe if only this was a segue into the next segment on proper Queen's English. God. And, of course, we have the Queen's English, although these days it is known as Received Pronunciation. This is the accent into which you speak properly. You enunciate every syllable and every word exactly as it should be. Certain people who have demonstrated this accent well would include David Attenborough, Judy Dench, as well as people like David Cameron, and of course, the BBC, and Boris Johnson. It's probably the only thing he ever did get right. This is the well-spoken upper class kind of language. This is where you don't get lazy on some things. You enunciate properly. You, you think things through. You prepare your speech. And often it is a little bit non-regional. So it's, it's kind of like a standard accent. You might have to adapt this into being like a royal accent. Um, it, it does kind of lend itself to all of that. This is possibly what the Americans try to emulate when they do a British accent, which... I can't actually tell you where exactly people with that accent live in this country, because I've, I've never fucking heard it. <laughs> so 
So there you go, I don't know if I've covered every single accent, there's some other little ones that I don't know too much about. You've got the Wigan accent, which I can't even replicate. You've got the Derby accent, where you come from the Vale of Pewter. But I can't even fucking speak about that, because, you know, it comes from Derbyshire. I don't think I've ever been there. Like, there's, there's so many fucking accents and inflections around this country, it's so difficult to pick up on every single one of them. The standard British accent doesn't seem to fucking exist. It's a nice shock for the Americans and any foreigners when they come to this country, especially like, Oh, hello, tip top of the day to you. And it's never fucking like that. <laughs> so there we go, I hope you enjoyed it at least. I mean, you know, it's going to be a bit of an eye-opener, fucking weird one for people who don't live in this country and haven't experienced these accents. And to people that have, you know, I apologize for butchering the fuck out of the way you speak. Oh, God, this was a difficult one. I need a nap. <laughs> Thank you.